Hello fellow HubSpotters, this is Emma with Kiwi Creative, and today we're talking about the strategy and process of creating custom fields in HubSpot. HubSpot's CRM is ready to roll with hundreds of default contact, company, deal, and ticket fields. But those fields don't always cover the data needed for your unique business needs. Thinking through the type of information you want to gather about your prospects and customers, and considering what assets and processes may be affected will ensure a thorough, sustainable, and documented field creation process. In this video, I will define default and custom fields, review your default options, discuss where to start when thinking about what custom fields to create, review popular field types, provide an editable worksheet for you to use when building your contact strategy, demonstrate how to create custom fields, and explain how to segment and report on those fields. Data is the foundation of everything you'll be doing in HubSpot. Contact segmentation, lead routing rules, targeted email messaging, personalization tokens, list creations, ad audiences, reports, and all that data is housed in properties, also known as fields. There are a lot of out-of-the-box fields, like I mentioned, such as industry, country, company name, email address, but depending on your business model, HubSpot won't have exactly what you need. That's where we can create custom fields with unique values to capture and store data that's important to you and your team. Out of date, incorrect, or missing data will wreak havoc on your CRM, your sales activities, and your marketing efforts. Spend a few minutes reviewing the best practices we'll talk about. And then when you complete the worksheet that we provide, you'll have a solid data strategy and a set of actionable steps to create your custom fields. Before clicking any buttons, let's talk about where to start when thinking about what would be affected, um, what you should create, what data is important to you, and the like. So before you get to the fun part, think about what would be affected should you create any custom fields. Will your lead assignment rules marketing contact strategy, targeted emails, or even potentially the sync between HubSpot and maybe Salesforce or Dynamics be changed? Think through the following points to get a better understanding of which fields you should create. Start with your integrations. Is HubSpot syncing data with other tools like Salesforce or Dynamics like I mentioned? When you first integrate either of those tools with HubSpot, the custom fields will automatically be created in HubSpot and there'll be an exact mirror image of the original tool. But if you create a custom field in HubSpot, it will not automatically be created in Salesforce or Dynamics. Another thing to think about is your former or existing database. If you're migrating from a different tool, what were you already collecting there? What are people keeping on Excels on their database? What activities are people logging in their email? Gather all of that together and review the types of information that you want to carry over into your HubSpot. Consider whether capturing data about contacts, companies, deals, tickets, sales activity, and all the like are replicatable in HubSpot. Then start thinking about your forms. What type of questions are you asking on your current forms? Well, that's a custom field we need to make sure we create. Even if you don't want to use HubSpot's forms, which is perfectly fine, the data from your existing forms is flowing into your HubSpot as soon as you install the HubSpot tracking code on your website. You'll need to go into those form submissions and review, are, is there data that's not being captured? Is it a big red line saying, hey, this question you're asking isn't being stored in HubSpot? Even if you want to keep that form external, make sure you create that field in HubSpot so the data has somewhere to land. Think about your reports. What type of info are you already reporting on? Does your leadership team um, review weekly sales activity reports? Are quotas measured a certain way? Do you display how many contacts are created or deals by, are closed by various segments like industry, state, job title, product type? Make sure you have a property to gather and organize the data in your desired reports. Talk with your contact facing teams. If your sales, service, or account management teams are constantly leaving um, some type of note on the contact company or deal record, maybe creating and displaying a field will help streamline their process and make their lives and our segmentation and reporting a little bit easier. Last thing to consider prior to clicking any buttons, what's on your wish list? If you've always wanted to organize your database, 
based on favorite dessert or send emails based on the type of pet your contact has or assign leads based on haircut and color. Now's the time to create that. So once you determine what type of data you're going to collect, you'll have to decide on a field type. As you can see here, there are several to pick from. Some of the most popular are as follows. Your single line text stores a string of text, just like multi-line can store several strings. These are ideal for open-ended questions, comments, job title, name. The downside is that single line text means anything can be entered. So this can make um, it difficult to segment or report on that data. Um, if you want to capture department, for example, be prepared for human resources, HR, H dot R dot, and any variation of misspelling that you would have to account for when trying to build that list or add that criteria to a workflow or a report. Multi-line text, on the other hand, can't be segmented or reported upon at all. Single checkbox stores only two options, yes, no, true, false, on, off. It's ideal for segmentation, right? Now, please note, in forms, it will appear as a single checkbox uh, where checked equals true and not checked equals false. So only one box will appear. It won't give an option for yes, no. Multiple checkboxes, it's an enumeration field that presents and stores many options. This is ideal for data that can be many things at once, like which hubs do you use, where the response can be any combination of marketing, sales, CMS, service, or operations. Uh, a number field, uh, similar to a single line text, it's just a string of numerical values. Um, it can be formatted as currency. And you want to use this field instead of single line text when what you want to capture is only numbers. So obviously a dollar amount. Um, do note that lists and workflows can only include whole integers. So make sure to use the less than or more than criteria to capture numbers that have decimals. Drop down select is one of my favorites. This is also an enumeration field. It's similar to multi checkbox in that it presents and stores several options, but only one value can be selected. So this is ideal for data that can only be one of those many things, like the example of department, where a contact can only be either in human resources or IT or marketing or sales or finance. So this is excellent when you don't want to provide a single line text because again, they can type in anything and instead you want them to pick from a list of predetermined values. Now, something to blow your mind, score. <laughs> Calculation field, that scores based on custom positive or negative attributes for companies or contacts or deals. And spoiler alert, that's how you do lead scoring. Now that we've kind of laid some of the foundation we've developed to help you fill out the fields you'll need in your portal, um, you can download this custom property creation worksheet, and this will be linked below the video. After completing this worksheet, and we've covered the majority of this copy here, just giving you examples, explaining the value, um, giving a little bit more definitions. We can head on down and you'll see we have a example of a worksheet that can help you really think through, not just I want to create a field, but where is it going to be used? What values will be pre-populated for folks to select from? And of course, this is a, just an editable Google Doc. The, the point is just to get you thinking. But after completing this worksheet, you'll have a living document to base your field creation on, as well as a guide for future trainings, compliance, and even portal audits. So you've talked with your client facing teams and you understand the data sync between tools and you've completed the worksheet with your wish list items. So let's build some fields. Now, we already know this answer because you completed the custom property creation worksheet. But after creating your fields, you'll need to consider where they go. So let's start off with just creating a field. That label is externally facing. Don't get hung up on this because if it's in a form, you can change just the label of that form so it presents a little easier. So let's use the example um, from my worksheet of contact type. We'll want to complete description. This is an internally facing value. This is helpful for those of us that forget sometimes what we created. It's also helpful if you have a lot of cooks in your kitchen and you want to be really transparent with new employees, existing employees, cross-training team members, and the like. This can be any description that helps you understand what the field is about.
course, once you determine that, what do you know? Field type. In this instance, like I said, drop down, select my favorite, and I'm going to go ahead and add values exactly from my example worksheet. I've done the work, don't you know? Uh, these can be anything you want. It can be anything that helps you segment and report on your data. Do I want to show this in forms, pop up in bots? Yes. Other time I may create a field that's only appropriate to show to internal HubSpot users. That's your call. Now that I created my contact type, I'm going to go ahead and give some of my demo contacts that value because otherwise I can't show you the rest of what I want to show you. I'll give myself that value too. Go ahead and edit these guys. Contact type, what do you know? I'm going to make those guys end users. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take all of page three and make them something different. They'll be partners today. And page seven of my demo data, we're going to make them job applicants, okay? All right, so we did a little bit of work just to show you. All right, now what's the punchline? Segmentation and reporting. A couple ways I can do that, of course. I can use filters and simply say, show me folks of my 1,063 records. Show me just the folks that are end users. Oh, come on, refresh a little faster, HubSpot. Show me folks that are partners. Oh, okay. Maybe we'll start with lists. Say I want to create a list, which are notoriously slow. If I create a list to simply say, I want to see all my partners and I'm going to keep it active. So anybody that's added or removed as a partner, this list will automatically update. I'm going to add a filter, contact property. Of course, this is exactly like our advanced filters that you just saw. Contact type is any of partners. I'm going to save this and leave because I know this is going to take a little while. Let me head on back to my contacts. Maybe now my advanced filters will play along. Contact type is any of end user. There we go. We have six whole end users, right? Or maybe job applicant, a hundred of them, or maybe is known. All right, 206 out of over a thousand records. So I can slice and dice this segmentation as, as much as I want. Your contact database, your lists. If you were running a workflow, you could use this same segmentation in your trigger criteria. And, and you'll recognize this, right? If I'm determining my trigger, what do you know? Contact property, which one? Contact type is any of end user or partners, right? So of course, then I could determine any following steps, but this piece of data can be used to slice and dice many of your processes, right? Additionally, how do I wanna report on these bad boys? Do I wanna see um, maybe create a report here. I'm going to go ahead and think about my contacts, of course, because it's a contact property. If this was a company property, that would be different. I'm going to go ahead and add contact type to my data set. And I want to visualize, maybe I want to look at contact type, how many in each segment, no value. Oh my goodness. Really helpful. Oh, create date. That should, that should fix it. We want to look at create date is all time. Oh, okay, that makes a little more sense. Uh-oh, 857 people don't have a value. Of course not, we didn't make one. So you see how we can layer this, right? So think about too, where is this gonna go in order to continue ga gathering this data? We can include data points, and we're gonna visit our back end here on the contact record. Is our example of contact type something important enough to present very prominently so folks can update it as necessary? Well, sure, go ahead. Contact type. Just added it right there. Maybe it's super duper important. Sure thing. Add it to the sidebar of your contact record. Uh, maybe it needs to be included in forms. And this is where we were talking about label, right? So mm, let me just grab a silly form here. Maybe I want to ask contact type. Here's the thing. Are your web visitors going to know what that means? So check this out. I click contact type. 
You'll notice the italicies contact type won't change, but maybe I'm going to change the outward facing label to say what best describes you because contact type might not mean anything to them, right? And user reseller partner. So now what they're going to see is what best describes you. And what I know is that that's going to save to contact type, right? So we've talked about where these bad boys go once we make them. We talked about how to segment them, how to report on them. And we know that with thoughtful field creation, the sky's the limit in terms of your ability to segment and report, okay? So you can use your fields to create those lists, filter through your contacts, report on how well your marketing efforts are performing among a certain group or specific segment, how likely certain contacts are to convert, but by taking the steps to think through how you want to do those things in your database before you actually start creating fields, you're cutting down on manual and duplicative work. Um, it's the exercise will leave you with a documented process. You're strategizing for long-term sustainable growth. And quite frankly, you're preventing a headache later on for when you wish you thought of collecting a certain data point. So think critically. Lay your data foundation first using this worksheet and go forth and collect.